Anyone that's watched this channel for any length of time knows that I love books about art. Well, today I have a new box. It says, with care. Now, I'm not sure, did they send this because they cared about me? Or am I supposed to take good care of the box? I don't know, but hey, I've got my box cutter. Let's see what's inside. Tell you what, they sure did use a big box to ship this thing in. Oh, it's a box within a box. Bubble wrap, or whatever you call these things. And there it is. Wow, <laughs> it's a hefty box. There we go. Yeah, okay, let's open this up. Oh my goodness, look at this. I've been wanting this book for a long time, but they are hugely expensive. Scott Christensen's The Nature of Light. It's a thick book. It's much larger than I expected. The last book I bought from him is called Selected Works. I got it at the Booth Museum. It was very thin. It was about $25. It was paperback. Uh, but this is a hardback, thick book. It looks like it has, it has 156 pages in it. That is fantastic. Now, the thing about this book, I've had it on my wish list on Amazon, A Books, uh, Thrift Books, uh, eBay forever. And when you look at any of these listings, let's see, if I go to Amazon.com, uh, they start at $424 with the most expensive option being $1,073.69. I did not pay that. Absolutely not. There's no way I'm going to spend $400 on a book. But that's, <laughs> that's the way these things have been listed for some time. If I go to A, a Books, let's see, there is a copy uh, for $190, $195, and then the next one is $424, $621, $621, all the way up to $1,556.85. How they came up with that number, I do not know. That's just, that's insane. And then if I go to eBay, if I go to eBay and do a search for this book, Nature of Light, I come up with, let's see here, search Scott Christensen. Yeah, The Nature of Light. There's only one on eBay, and they're wanting $400 for it. I did not pay that for this book. What I do is I, I'll put these books on a wish list. Sometimes they'll pop up on an estate sale or somebody is highly motivated to sell, or they're just... You know, they're reasonable. This book is as good as it may be. I don't think it's worth $400. There is one other book I want to get from Scott Christensen, but right now it's, while it's not as stratospheric in cost, it is called, let's see, uh, it's called, hey, if anybody wants to buy this for me, this would be great. Uh, on Distant Ground. So there's three copies on eBay. One's 114, the other's 132, and the least expensive one is $110. And I've already looked at the description of that, and it has some damage to it. I think you know $100 plus is more than I want to spend on a book. So especially a used book. But I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking. So that's the next volume I'd like to get in this series. I really like Scott's work. But let's take a look at what's inside this book. Because this book is so hard to come by, I thought I'd take a few moments to show you some of the pages in this beautifully done book. Now this is the hard, uh, I guess this is, I don't know if this came in a paperback, but this happens to be a hardbound version. You can see the dust jacket, it's very beautifully designed. And there's the book itself. This book was published in 
It says here 2005, so it's about 15 years old, 14 years old uh, at the time of recording. Uh, Scott's work has remained consistent. I mean, he's made, he certainly has refined his work, but it's, it's, it's very recognizable. Here's the table of contents. There's a editorial by Todd Wilkinson called The Quest for One True Statement. Uh, Scott Christensen wrote an, an essay. It's called My Place is the West. Page 31, Gallery of Paintings. 107, Gallery of Studies. Hmm, that's going to be interesting to see. And then page 154, Exhibitions, Collections, Honors, and then Acknowledgements. So here's the opening page. This is a painting. It says Little Warm Springs. Uh, it's featured on page 41. So this is just a detail from that painting that's 12 by 24 inches oil on canvas. That's a nice, uh, nice, I look forward to reading this. Okay, and here's Scott's uh, chapter. It's called My Place is the West. And here he shows War Bonnet, War Bonnet Peak. You may recognize this painting from one of Scott's uh, uh, videos that he's released. Uh, I, I've got an old DVD uh, which he goes into the development of this, of this painting. So it's a very beautifully done book. <laughs> there shows Scott working near his cabin. More studies. Look at this. This picture it says um, uh, Scott Christensen, Larry Moore, and uh, Jason Saunders. And now we come to the Gallery of Paintings. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's called A Glimpse of Moonlight. 20 by 30 inches. That's what I love about these large books like this. Um, you you just you can sit out on your back patio or in your easy chair, uh, in your studio, whatever, and just uh, you can take a nice look at uh, study these these paintings. You can see so much detail in that. Of course, nothing replaces places actually seeing the painting in real life. But this is as close as you can get. This is really nice. Much better than a computer screen. Jackson Hole Winter. I love Jackson Hole. It's been many years since I've been there. That's a beautiful painting. I like what he's done with the light here. It's called Midwinter South Park. Park. It's 48 by 96 inches. It's beautiful. What I like about his paintings is it doesn't he doesn't necessarily go after the obvious. I you know when I started painting I really I really wanted to go and do the Grand Canyon, the Grand Tetons and you know all the other highly recognizable places. But as I've uh, continued to learn, I've I've come to embrace the idea of just looking at or painting uh, things that others might not notice. Oh, I love that painting. This is called Salt River Range. It's 40 by 60 inches. Look at the values, the value uh, zones that you have here. It's called Peak of September. Studies. Well, speaking of the Grand Canyon, there's the Grand Canyon. So you see a study for it, and then this is a 12 by 16, and you can see how he developed that into this painting called the Rim of the Canyon, 48 by 60 inches.
I really like this um, wide aspect ratio for paintings. I think they look cinematic. Maybe that's because my background is in filmmaking and video where we're used to wide aspect ratios from 16 by 9, 2.31, cinemascope, technoscope, that sort of thing. I like these moody um, paintings like this. This one's called Georgia Moon. Looks like someplace down on the Georgia coast or the Okefenokee. Wow, look at that. Harbor near Skibbereen, 36 by 36. And now we come to Gallery of Studies. This ought to be interesting. 10 by 12s, 14 by 20s, 12 by 16. Brooks Lake Runoff. You can see how he captures the um, the color notes of a scene and the values there. It gets the essence of the scene down, which aids in memory in working that painting, to working up a larger painting. If only I could do that. I know it in theory, I just can't make my hands do this yet. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> There's figures in the... This is something I don't typically see in Christensen's paintings, is, uh, are figures. Now these are much smaller. These are six by eights. Water, uh, waters of Kauai and Day's End on the Big Island. Those are lovely, beautiful. Well, I think that's all of it. All in all, I'm pleased with the purchase of this book. It's very beautiful. Look at that. Scott Christensen's The Nature of Light. So what about you? Are there any good books that you have gotten lately? I'd like to hear about it. I'm always looking for good ideas for art books, whether it's a how-to, art history, a contemporary artist. Uh, I like them all. Let me know what you found. You know what to do. Click, subscribe, bell, like, comment. Have I got all the bases covered? I think so. Or am I supposed to take care of the box? I know I've had complaints on YouTube about uh, the way I handle these boxes. Cut.